Hi guys, my name is Majid and in today's video I'm going to be doing a product comparison uh, on all the iPads that have ever been released onto the market. Now we had most of these in the house so we thought it would be a good idea to give you guys a performance test to show you how far they've come from the very first initial release of the iPad 1 to the newly released iPad Air and the performance is actually quite staggering in terms of what you used to get to what you get now. Of course, that's due to innovations in technology, but it's still pretty cool when you take a look at it. Uh, now, we're gonna be mainly testing four things. We did performance tests, all around performance tests using the Passmark test. Uh, we did a Geekbench test, and that turned out pretty, it's pretty standard, but that one did not work on the iPad 1 since it does not support Geekbench and we can't download the older versions. And the final tests that we did were a boot up and a shutdown test just to see how fast the devices boot up from completely off and how fast they shut down uh, without any apps running in the background. But that's basically it guys. So let's check out the video and uh, let me know what you guys think down below. And if some parts of the video are dark, sorry about that. We filmed in a place where there wasn't really too much light. But uh, yeah, enjoy the video. All right guys, so the first test we're gonna be taking a look at is the Passmark performance test. This benchmark basically goes through the different uh, aspects of your device and different components and puts them under extreme pressure to test out how they handle. Now it tests various things like the CPU, the disk, the memory, the 2D and 3D performance and also gives you an overall performance at the end. Now you have to understand that when we compare these devices they're from the first generation all the way to the fifth generation device so there are a bit of differences. Uh, first off the screen resolution. On the iPad 1 and 2, you have a 1024 by 768 screen resolution, which gives it an advantage in terms of the processing power, because when we did this test, we noticed that the iPad 2 did a lot better than the 4 and 5. That was mainly because of the retina displays that were introduced in the iPad 3, which took up a lot more performance power on the CPU and the GPU, because they had to push out four times the amount of pixels to give you that sharp image. So that's why they lacked a little bit in terms of performance overall, and that's why you have a higher mark on the iPad 2. But the iPad Air came out on top having the most powerful processor, getting a score of 2188. Uh, so if you guys wanna see a more in-depth uh, evaluation of this benchmark, we're gonna have pictures posted. I'll post a link down below so you can go check it out and you can go through the different aspects of the device, including uh, the disk, the memory, the CPU, the 2D, 3D performance. All right guys, so the next test that we ran was the Geekbench test. Geekbench is an in-depth processor test uh, benchmark that goes through and puts a lot of strain on your processor to see how well it performs uh, during the different aspects of its testing stage. Now, uh, we weren't able to download it on the iPad 1, that's why you don't see it being tested. So the test that we did includes the iPad 2, 3, 4, and the Air. Uh, and we got results that were expected. Now, we didn't get anything out of the extraordinary, but it's mainly because of the processors and the yearly increases that they bring out every year. So the iPad 1 had an A4 processor, it was a dual core. Uh, the iPad 2 has an A5, so just the next iteration. And it's still, they're all dual cores all the way up to the iPad Air. The only difference is you have the A6 in the iPad, three a6x in the ipad 4 and in the ipad air you get a a7 with a coprocessor uh, called the m7 processor and that does help it quite a bit in terms of the aspects that it has to handle in the os so it gives it more computing power to the a7 processor that's why you can get a higher score doing various things that's why you see completely kills everything else in terms of performance. The iPad 4, which was the latest, most powerful iPad, got almost half of what the iPad Air got, and it's a smaller, lighter tablet. So that's actually pretty impressive in terms of Apple and how they've engineered uh, the iPads to be just better every year. The evolution, as you can see, is pretty staggering. This test really puts into perspective the overall performance increases that we've seen. Uh, we weren't even able to do the iPad 1, but as you can see, it's almost gone like seven times greater in terms of performance from the iPad 2 to the iPad Air. So it's definitely very, very fast and when you're using these devices in real life you'll notice how fast they you know switch apps and how fast you can open up an app and close it the loading times in terms of the applications uh, pieces that it has to load up it's a huge difference even when I was trying to go through the app store uh, opening it up on the iPad one it kept freezing that's partly because of the new um, iOS that come out but it's also the fact that 
you know, the processing power is getting so much better and the OS is getting so much more refined. So you're getting a much better performance increase uh, currently. Now, the final benchmark that we ran was 3D Mark. We wanted to test out the graphics of each device since Apple says that they've come a long way. And it's clearly evident that the iPad Air is leaps and bounds ahead of its original uh, you know, iPad that came out into the market. So we can see the difference using this test and it's quite staggering when you see the numbers already, you can see that it's quite far ahead in terms of how well it's uh, doing in this benchmark. It's just flying through the different stages that it's being tested on. Uh, when you get to the numbers though, it gets really quite interesting. The amount that they increased, like going from 1,600 to all the way up to 10,000 in the iPad Air, you'll notice that the iPad Air is leaps and bounds ahead, even in terms of frames per second that it can do, uh, going from uh, 7.5 frames per second in the iPad to, uh, to almost 57. So it's getting close to your 60 frames per second, which we'll eventually see probably in the next iteration of the iPad. but. You can see how far it's come, how well the iPad Air uh, performs in terms of graphics. So if you do pick one of these up, you'll have a lot of fun in terms of the different applications available and how well it'll be able to play it on this device. So lastly, we put these devices through a shutdown and a startup test. We noticed that we got varied results again here. Uh, the iPad 1 got a very quick shutdown. Uh, coming in second place was the iPad 3. Uh, third place was the iPad 2. Fourth place being the iPad Air, and lastly the iPad 4. That's most likely because it has a lot more stuff to load and the iOS that's running isn't as efficient as the iPad Airs or the iPad 1's original iOS. Now taking a look at the startup, again you'll notice uh, very similar results, but you'll notice that the iPad Air did get the lead and it started up the fastest coming in. Number two was iPad 2, and then we had the iPad 1, the iPad 4, and last place was the iPad 3. So overall varied results, but you can see the differences in performance in terms of shutting down and starting up your device. So that's basically it guys. If you liked what you saw, make sure to press that like button, add this video to your favorites. If you could share it with your friends, that would help us out quite a bit. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel already, make sure to check out our videos and subscribe to stay updated for the latest content that we bring out. Uh, thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.